okay so what do we have till now like uh, in the last video we talked about uh, baselining the code for our nest.js microservice where we introduced the docker config docker compose and we just uh, used nest.js cli to create a basic application and we were able to run the application on the docker compose so we have these two containers one is running nest.js another is running postgres and when we are doing docker compose up docker compose up and we are able to see that both the containers are up and running nest.js cli is a cli using which we have created a simple app okay type rm migration type rm is a framework or you can say library which is going to help us to talk to postgres so it it needed orm config dot ts where you to specify a couple of stuff okay i can just change it to large or something like this okay this is more clear now i mean this is all microservice and microservice is really a hype whatever we are writing in monolith now we are writing a proper structured service which is minimal like auth service which is doing all the authentication related stuff only login register reset password forget password validate token and validate the expiry of token all the things what is the minimal expected from the auth service which will just give you the access token refresh token and all those things and it will have its own minimal one or two tables in the database which where you are going to manage the user session and the user properties okay so if you talk about the checklist of the service we can also talk about 12 factor app which gives you all the information about okay how you can how you should create uh, your microservice and here we are using nest.js so we are going to fulfill all those things with that okay how 12 factor app is saying okay you need to have a proper logging logging of all the events so we are going to introduce a logger module we are going to have so this is a logger module we are going to have a proper documentation of services documentation of apis using swagger we are going to write a middleware so that we can also protect the user data using protected api protected routes and we are going to write a middleware for that we will use a database module which will use uh, based on the environment it will connect to the different environments we are going to write a config module what the config module config module will inject the configurations runtime configurations by reading it from the process.env to the our application config module and this is our repositories i mean the, our main module or you can say the repository modules which will talk to the postgres and will help us in fetching the data okay so nest.js is a modular nest.js is really nice when you talk about the code structure and all you write controllers services modules for each and everything you can create a modules like document modules logging logger modules with the logger services you can write database module with the database services config modules with the configurations and config module will see will need env from dot env i mean dot env you will be able to feed the data to process dot env and for test environment you can have a dot env dot test because what we want to have is we have the end to end test which we wanted to run and these test these uh, these different configurations files environment files can be populated in the process dot env so I can run the integration test also locally targeting to the test to database that's cool right and this database module will need a connection URL which we are going to feed through the dot env config module will feed the things to the process dot env then the other modules wherever they want to use they wanted to read the port on uh, host and they wanted to read the database URL the logging uh, level all these these, these things they can read from here and there okay so the the quick overview like what all things we have achieved in this example 
I know you might not be familiar with the in-depth Docker concept, but it's all about Docker Compose, how you spin up multiple containers, do the volume binding and all. Here we are doing the volume mapping so that once we create a table and we just, until unless we don't clean the Docker volume, that table in the, that particular database will be there because the database you have persisted on your host machine. So even if you do Docker, Docker Compose down, Container will die, but your volume will still be there until unless you manually prune it. Okay, you can create a multiple database using Docker Compose file. Here you can pass the comma separated. So our database is ready. Now the next part is writing config module, app module, logger module, middlewares, and the domains. Inside domains, we can have a shared modules, core modules, auth modules. Now here comes the Nest.js core building blocks we are going to add. A middleware what middleware will do middleware will check okay if you are doing a reset password or forget password or you are trying to access some protected api so middleware will check do you have authorization header there inside the request logger module will help us in logging the everything that is happening around the services okay user request is this now it is accessing this service documentation here we are going to use swagger and we can have everything documented well defined that is the advantage of using swagger and in nest.js it comes out of the box you just need to introduce one module everything will get documented you can also use some annotations to make the documentation more cleaner okay here the database for the database we are going to use typo rm nest.js typo rm That is actually Nest.js provides it so that we can easily create a services and access the database entities and define all the methods. I mean access all the methods provided by type RM repositories. Okay, config module swagger. This is used. We are going to use Nest.js swagger for it. Logger, you can decide either you can use debug. Debug is powerful or you can use Winston so here you can use debug and you can define the different modes verbose error and all and you can just do a console out all those things these middlewares middlewares will help us you can write any kind of middleware targeting a particular routes these are actually interceptors if you set a middleware for a particular route like express middleware then this middleware will execute first before you send this request to your service okay we are going to write let's say where you are going to check okay user authentications the user has authorization header or not for the protected apis and everything is there or not now the repositories here you are going to write the nest js entities Like you are going to have a user entity and then using these repositories user repo you can access all the methods user repo you are going to inject into services nest.js services and once you have those services you can access the defined methods for those entities like user.find user.find all user.destroy remove all the methods whatever those are there so coming to after baselining of the code now what is the next set of things we are going to take care is we are we will start writing controllers modules services and all let's say uh, let's delete this for now here in the domain i'm going to create auth so inside auth i will have a auth module auth service.ts auth controller and auth module auth controller auth maybe DAO service now these are like this is how I, I i work i create these at least four different files and auth dto where we are going to define validation of uh, the type validation of the payloads which are and also you can create another file is auth response.dto 
using which you can actually make your swagger look more clean like you can actually provide what will be the request payload what will be the response look like 200 response will give you this 500 and all possible exceptions all you can define in the response DTO okay if you draw all those things these are actually the building blocks of uh, Nest.js service so in Nest.js if you talk about simple module this is you can call it as a module if you talk about simple pretty this is a module inside module you can put a lot of things first of all the controllers where you are going to define your routes API routes okay get put post delete then we have services services you are going to inject inside the controllers okay you can have another thing is the DAO services services or repositories IPRM repositories which are actually going to access the database entities this is your database entity I mean this will feed the data to the repositories repositories will use uh, we will use repositories inside services services will feed the data to the controllers and controller and here is our user who is requesting this uh, get put post you will send a data back something like this so these are just uh, all different things and in middle of these you will use middleware pipe interceptors filters which are actually the building blocks of nest.js like middleware you wanted to intercept the request author only authenticated users interceptor you wanted to modify the response before sending it to the client by putting the proper status code proper message and all you can use interceptor pipe if you wanted to transform the response transform the request then you can use pipes so what i will do is if you're not familiar with this i will not cover like what is the basic building blocks of nest.js but like i'm going to use all my services using nest.js so it's either look my look for my playlist which i will put in the description otherwise you can just talk about these things so what are the interceptors guards modules if you are already doing angular development like angular js angular framework then it's very easy to understand the modules exception filters controllers and all okay so and these are the details before that i think there is a dto also sitting here there you can define a validation criteria okay the email should be a proper password should be of eight character length dto's will validate the data before controllers start talking to the service and here we are doing dependency injection because services will be injected inside our controllers because these are also another layer of services dao services and these all are providers DAO services will injected inside us will be used inside a services you will do a dependency injection like I say I send a request of login and what I did is I'm just sending a username password right so first I will check the validation criteria okay this is the post API v1 API v1 something like this API v1 auth login it's HTTP post right and what is expectation if your login is successful i'm going to give you the access token refresh token in the response back so what i'm expecting in the post is username password so the dto's in the nextjs will validate okay both are uh, not empty both are string email is a proper email using class validators then if uh, if there is a validation failure then it will send you the 400 bad request otherwise controller controller will forward that request to the service service will check the data in the database using DAO helper services which are using the database repositories type or repositories so this is how this nest JS basic structure works this is common for all the APIs you write login register reset password forget password or any kind of any service you are writing in any microservice you will write controllers services DAO helpers response DTOs request DTOs modules everything is inside a module right and then you create a shared module core modules and then in your whole app there will be an app module this is app module 
this is actually the root module now what will happen is this is let's say your first auth module you will put the auth module here similarly you will create another uh, module here you will put a let's say dom uh, shared module or database module then you will inject database module again to that module because there will be one root module and all other are shared modules database module i will just put the names all here shared module All, all you inject in the app module and then here is your main.ts file which is bootstrapping the whole app if you look into the code what we are doing here is here is your app module right here is your main.ts main.ts is importing the root module now inside app module you you will provide all, you will import all the other third party modules like type or module shared module core module auth module all the other modules which you are going to code like logger module, config module, swagger module, all the modules you will put here. Some are predefined like NestJS provides, NestJS type ORM, NestJS swagger and all these things. Some you are going to code like auth module, logger module, config module, database module. You will write your own modules, you will put it here. All the controllers and services of app module. Because now the domain module will have its own controller services modules like this. Here I will put uh, inside auth module, I will write auth module here also. Let's say this is auth module. So we don't have any controllers and services for now, but we will create them. So this auth module you will import and you will put that inside the uh, domain module first. I mean this is this is how we will create a layers. Inside domain, all you put all your domains inside domain modules you can put uh, you will import all these modules this is your auth module and this is your domain module now all your application related module you will import here do is auth module now there may be another folder which is saying is shared or core module so from core you will export a core module let's say core dot module yes so you will import the core module here now what happens is now domain module is a is everything you just import the domain module inside app module and you are done because no mo domain module will take care of importing other sub modules so the hierarchy is you have sub modules on top of that sub module one on two three then you have a domain module then you have app module and your main.ts which is good setting application okay something like this so this is our pretty much our structure now what we will do is because it's a baseline and i'm going to write this code only once for all the services so i don't want i'm not in hurry we will write a logger module we will write a this database module and database service which is going to use type orm uh, module because uh, I, we can also write something here what 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 it does is it uses the type rm module so we already have the type rm module added in the package.json so we can import that database module or type rm module anywhere we want so db module we can write a injectable classes and module here so we'll write a db module so let's say it's module and inside db module because we are going to initialize the database module and pass you have we are going to use type rm so we can also look into documentation so it's not a surprise because i'm going to use a little different approach how we can create 
data based module first of all these module dependencies and then this is a database module what we are passing a service and what the service is doing service is taking all the data source be it what is a type what is a host what is port username password and all so it's like a async initialization we are passing all these uh, parameters from process.env created a database provider initialized it and we passed it now this database module you can pass to your app module and then you start accessing these repositories by injecting them okay similarly like swagger swagger is easy this is how you set up the swagger for your application you will just copy this code before bootstrapping our application and what else we can just directly get it from here I mean you can just go through it if you're uh, really interested in understanding it like uh, how we are creating a how we are creating a dynamic module what are the life cycle events and what is a controller how it looks like simple controller is like this you will tag the controller user and then you will define all the get put post methods this is how we create a modules like this is how we define the dependencies app module root module all the user module, order module, shared module, they may have dependency of other feature modules. Middlewares, pipes, guards, interceptors, providers is like the services we are creating. The providers all are injectable and inside this either you can inject another helper service or this injectable service will be injected inside a controllers. So you might see some example somewhere. Because inside a controller we inject the service and then from the once the request arrives you call the service method to get the data. Okay, so first of all we will write the database module. This is how we will go. This database module then we will write each and every module like config module which is we can use the config module directly from here like uh, NSJS config. If we are writing a vanilla express then we use dot env and all these methods to inject the runtime and uh, configurations to the process dot env but you can write a config module dot for root this is the config module what it does is it will you just need to add this in your root module it will actually populate the whatever you put in dot env to process dot env but we may have different environment like development stage production so based on the config file name also you can do we are writing it little differently so we will write our config service so in the next video that will be again lengthy i am going to put all these things together and we are going to have a baseline ready i, I can say this semi baseline ready because we have the docker ready and hello world app is running that is a starter api which is running but now we need to have our building blocks running building blocks ready so that we can start writing the actual auth service by by writing to the user table this is a one time setup which i am doing after that i am not going to talk about these basic things uh, thanks everyone